Yo! Ooh, what's up? I'm Adam. I don't Will. All right, and we are back. So if you haven't watched the video that Will did with us on Data Activator inside of Microsoft Fabric, go check out that video. But in this video, we're gonna dig in a little deeper into Data Activator and what it can do beyond Power BI. When we start thinking about integrations with other products, when we think about Power Platform, and it can do so much more. Cool, thank you very much for having me along again. You know, I think we've given you a flavor of what Data Activator can do in terms of alerting just on top of that Power BI data. But if you've got streaming data, you can do more. If you want to go and define more complex logic that determines whether or not you send one of these alerts, you can do more. And as you said, if you want to integrate elsewhere in the Power Platform, reach out to Power Automate, go do some fun stuff there, you can do a bit more. You mentioned streaming, so that means we potentially are talking real, real time. Real, real time. Real, real time. All right. You know how we like to do it on right. Cube. Enough of all this talk. Right. Let's head over to your machine, go. whichever way. I'm actually going to use the same scenario that we were talking about before, where bikes. we've got these bikes that are whizzing around London. People are taking them from these docking stations, doing their little journey and dropping them off somewhere else. And I mentioned before that there's an API where Transport for London, who run these bikes, make this data available. And they make it available in real time. So you can go and query it and say, hey, how many bikes are available at the end of my road? You know, if I go down there to pick up my bike to ride to work, is it going to be there? When I get to work, is there going to be a space for me to drop it off in the docking station? So we can use this data. And we're actually going to be calling this in real time to make sure that we've got this nice, rapidly changing stream of data okay. that we're going to react to and build some of these alerts on top of. It's all about looking over a stream of changing data. So we're actually going to start off. I've got this data. It's already flowing into Data Activator. I used event streams in Fabric to go and call that API and to be bringing it in and pushing it into the Data Activator reflexes. You see the data as it comes in in real time here. These, yeah. these rows that are flashing up in green, yeah. these are the new bits of data that we're pulling off that API. So we're going to start building some triggers and some alerts inside the reflex on nice. top of this data. So what I have to do is I have to tell the Tractator, okay, how, how do I interpret all of these stream of events that are coming out? There's a ton of information here about the bike points, the docking station, what street they're in, how many bikes there are, how many empty slots there are and the like. So what I'm going to do is create one of these docking station objects. Just give it a name of like, how do I identify out of all of these, these, these events that are coming in this stream? What is it I care about? In this case, the bike point. I can choose the other fields that I want to pull through that I might use in my alerts or in my uh, the messages that we send. And I'm going to go create this in, into design mode. So this is kind of the data view of the stuff that's coming in. And then we swap over to design mode. Now we're looking at the objects and the properties that we're going to work with to build our triggers. So if I select our bike count property here, you can see the number of bikes available in each of these five docking stations as we're kind of uh, taking the bikes and checking them in and out of those docking stations. So we select five of these docking stations just to sample it, to show on this chart. We've got 120 that we're monitoring all together in the system. Imagine if we tried to draw 120 on this chart. So we just give you a sample. You can go change it if you want to. But what we want to do now is start building a trigger. So when you create a trigger in Data Activator, you need to tell it, what do you want to monitor? What condition are you looking for and what action do you want to take? So over here we see select first. So I'm going to choose my bike count property and we come down and choose what's the detection criteria that we're looking for. What's the logic that we want to look for? And I can do things like when it becomes greater than or less than a value, when it enters or exits a range. We distinguish between becoming greater than versus being greater than. There's an important distinction when you've got like fast moving data like this. Do I want to be alerted every time there's the, there are more bikes or, or less bikes in a particular threshold? Well, we just want to know when it changes to go uh, over that threshold uh, or below it. That just helps reduce the amount of spam that you might get yeah. generated and all the messages it's, that get sent. Yeah, it reduces out. the noise. We can actually even go further than that. So saying, you know, when it becomes less than or equal to, let's say, two, I can even say I want to be alerted every time, each time it becomes less than or equal to, um, or only alert me once it happens a certain number of times in 10 minute period or in an hour period, whatever or only alert me when it becomes less than two and stays there for 10 minutes. So again, there's other ways that you might reduce that kind of noise in the system. So a really good example of this was we were talking to an airline who wanted to notify people when there are gate changes. What normally happens is if, if the gate changes once, it's probably going to change again pretty soon. So they said, wait 15 minutes, only send a notification once they've got a solid gate and they know what it's going to be for 15 minutes. Then we'll tell people to go go check yeah. on your gate. Patrick had mentioned in the other video about like, hey, what about that alerting thing on the dashboard item inside of Power BI? And we said that you're limited in what you can do. And, and what you're showing yeah. here is you've got a lot more 
flexibility in how you can yeah exactly these things. there's a lot more ways that you can express like more complex business yeah. logic about you can also start to build these things up and kind of layer them on top of each other i can go and summarize and filter this data in different ways so the raw data as it comes in mm-hmm. i can do an average over a time period to try and smooth out any of those peaks before i do my alerts i can count the number of events so if it's something where you just want to say how many errors did i get in a particular time period i might do that I could filter out and say, you know, I get like minus 99 is like an error code value. Filter those ones out because I know that if it's minus 99, that's not the temperature really. Mm -hmm. That was just an error. So having said, I want to know when it becomes less than two and stays there for 10 minutes. I get a preview. The two that we sampled, turns out that there were a couple of occasions when that happened. And that's when this trigger would have fired for those five. And at the bottom here, this trigger activations chart is showing me across all of the bike points that we're monitoring, not just the sample. How often would this trigger have fired? So again, that helps me get an idea of how much spam this might generate and how many messages and alerts this might generate. Yeah. Looks like there's a bit of a spike here, or, you know, 20 past six, I guess this is everybody commuting home. So the last point then is what action do we want to take? Yeah, what do we do? So before um, I showed you whether I could send email, send a Teams message, whatever it is I want to do. And we can do more to customize this as well. So in this case, I might want to say, you know, uh, so not enough bikes in a particular street. So I can put these curly braces around something to say, hey, go and get the value from one of the other properties from these events and put that in the message. When you receive one of these alerts, you want the person who's getting the alert to know exactly, okay, what have I got to do about it? I've got to drive to that street and go and move the bikes around. I always hate that. I get some notification or something. I'm like, okay, now I got to go do homework to figure out what the heck is going on. Figure out what's wrong and blah, 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 blah. So again, send me a test alert. It's going to send me a Teams message. Everything looks good. I go hit start, and that's going to start running in the background. With this streaming data, we're building operational alerting applications. And my cat is very squeaky. (laughs) Hi. This is my very squeaky animal. I'm going to put her outside and then... uh, It's not YouTube without a cat. We don't care whether that's data that's coming in, like I said, once an hour, down to once a minute, even once a second. I told you to go away. (laughs) So let's talk about something else. Let's talk about how else we can integrate with other parts of the Power Platform. One of the really cool things that we can do is use not just send Teams messages or emails, but use Power Automate to kick off activities in other operational systems. I'm tracking user activities. I want to go put something in our CRM system to make sure that our account managers go and talk to a customer. I'm tracking maintenance issues, maybe with a uh, with a truck or a, another vehicle. I want to log a maintenance ticket in our maintenance systems, not right. just rely on Teams or email as a way of communicating. So let's use that as an example. So what I have set up here is a Power Automate flow that listens for when a particular data activator trigger fires. In this case, it just adds something into my to-do list. So we're using this to represent logging a maintenance request, but this could be using any of the, what have they got, like 200 or so yeah, connectors yeah. in Power Platform. There's a lot of different Loads things. Of yeah. So basically you have an input and then you can go do something with that input. Exactly. Yep. And we're passing some of that context through in this as well. So we know which object it was that fired it, so which street in this case, where where the bike was. You can see when the trigger was activated and some more information that I'm sending through. Right. The scenario here is that we're tracking with IoT sensors like accelerometers and GPS things about what's happening to the bikes as they're driving around London. And we want to track, like, is there any particular excessive vibration on these bikes? So if there's, you know, people are riding over cobbles or whatever, then maybe the bikes are going to get a bit uh, worn out. And to kind of simulate that, I've got a little app on my phone that uses the accelerometer here, sends that data up to Data Activator. All right. And that's where we see it start to appear in this uh, in this chart. So you see, if I start shaking my phone, you can imagine I'm cycling over the cobbled streets of London, as this bike gets sh- shaken around, you know, these, these sensors are going to appear on my screen. The values are going to start jumping up and down, and you can see the maintenance requests oh, oh, automatically all. start popping up in real time. Will did something system. bad. That's what I'm seeing here. You yeah, got a little too much noise. Much. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> too much noise. <laughs> I can go back and track. But that ability to reach out using Power Automate and go straight into these other systems rather than putting a human in the loop is a great way of kind of like really being efficient with the way that these alerts are being generated. Nice. Do me a favor, Will. Shake the phone again. There it is. There it is. Yay. All right. I love this, Will, though. So we're taking the power that's within Microsoft Fabric, leveraging Data Activator, and we're leveraging things outside to to take us even to another level. So we're bringing in Power Automate through the Power Platform. Using that, we can go out to anything, really. We're all about enabling actions. We're all about saying, 
when you find a particular insight, automatically go take some actions. That's amazing. That's where data activator really shines. And just a reminder, we said this in the last video, but make sure the reflex that you've created. So anything with the data activator pieces yeah. that's sitting in a workspace with a diamond on it, and then Power Automate may also require some additional licensing as well. All right, let us know in the comments, what do you think? Uh, did this just blow your mind and what you can do with data and, and leveraging other you know pieces of the puzzle? bringing them all together to make a whole picture. Let us know what you think. Uh, Will, as always, thank you so much for joining us and everyone watching, keep being awesome. And we'll see you in the next video.